It's a rarity when I get to review a brand new Nintendo 64 game on this channel, but lo and behold in 2023 the latest release for the console landed with Xenocrisis, coming from Bitmap Bureau here in the UK. Now stop me if you think that you've heard this one before, but for those not aware, Xenocrisis has been around for a number of years now and is available on a huge number of different platforms, both retro and modern. What makes this N64 release so unique, however, is that the console is notoriously difficult to program for. And so even to see this game show up as either a digital ROM download or a fully fledged physical release is just such a joy. And it's a release that I hope more people can get behind and fully support. Perhaps the best place to start though is a little bit about the game's history. It was first released in the year 2019 for a number of different systems, but primarily people tended to see this as being a Sega Genesis release for those into retro gaming. It's a multi-directional room shooter in the same vein as games like Total Carnage, Smash TV, I suppose you could say Robotron and so on. Now, if you go look at the original Kickstarter campaign where over £72,000 was raised from just under 1,300 backers to bring the game to the Sega Genesis, it was also developed at the same time and released for Dreamcast, the Nintendo Switch and also Steam. The campaign went incredibly well and there were frequent updates, lots of backer engagement and the project was finally delivered, albeit a little bit later than planned. The game arrived to mix to positive reviews which really do depend on which version and platform you play on. With the game looking and feeling like an original Sega Mega Drive title, Porting it to other systems as the years went by looked fairly straightforward and that's pretty much what began happening. It was on April Fool's Day this year in 2023 that the studio put out a press release saying that the game was now coming to the Nintendo 64 and many many people including myself saw this as being a little bit of a joke. Thankfully we were all proven wrong when just a few short months later the game was released on N64. Now look, I don't have the physical edition here because I just don't collect physical anymore. But if I did, I would be all over the complete packages that they offer with this game. What I absolutely love the most though is that the Western and Japanese releases of the game have completely different box artwork. I've said it many times on the channel before that I love the huge differences that the N64 games had in terms of the box art in different regions. And it's a cool throwback nod that Bitmap Bureau didn't just copy and paste the box for all regions. The Japanese box art is absolutely awesome and in my opinion it would sit perfectly on anyone's collection of physical releases. If you have a flash cart like myself then you can also purchase the ROM directly from the Bitmap Bureau website. I'll link it up in the description box down below. It's not a sponsored video and I obtained my own ROM file for this one, so I'm free to say whatever I feel about the game overall, but the reason why I want to support and stress the point really that you can go in the legal direction to buy the game is that it does directly help and support the studio. There's a big lack of studios that do work on the N64 and there's a very few N64 related projects that are currently ongoing. And so by helping to support them by buying the game, it will hopefully lead to future projects like this that we could come to enjoy in later years. Now with that aside, let's look at what the game is actually all about. Xeno Crisis is a room shooter as I previously mentioned. And if you like the aforementioned games, then this will no doubt be right up your street. It looks, plays and sounds like a Sega Mega Drive game from the early 90s and that's definitely not a bad thing. It's the kind of game that my dad would have loved back in the day and I honestly think that everyone will get some enjoyment from this title. The game's story is that Commander Darius receives a distress signal from a research facility which has been overrun with aliens. Two marines named John Marsh and Sarah Ridley are basically sent in to take back control and send the alien scum back to where they came from. The storyline is really as simple as that. In the same 80s action movie veins it's tapping into, the game really doesn't need anything else to move on from this point. You'll work your way through a series of procedurally generated levels, killing everything with a pulse, picking up dog tags which act as the in-game currency, you'll save humans and let rip with an insane arsenal of weapons and at the end of each stage turn a giant boss into mincemeat. It's a simple classic formula and offers instant pick up and play qualities that the Nintendo 64 isn't always known for. 
In an era when the N64 was released, many developers were abandoning this style of gameplay in exchange for creating larger and more story-driven titles. It's both refreshing to see on the Nintendo 64, but it also feels incredibly out of place. No matter how long I played this on N64, it did always just feel like I was playing a Genesis title. Perhaps this is down to the game's graphics. I love the artwork here. The graphical style is fantastic and the enemy designs are a treat. Much later in the game I feel things that take a bit of a downturn because the last three stages or so really feel like they were lacking some of the cool ideas that drove the first half of the game forward, but it's never what I would consider to be a bad experience. A simpler way to look at it would be that the game throws all of the cool stuff at you early on and then seems to fizzle out before the ending which is absolutely awesome and don't worry I'm not going to put any spoilers in here. There's a ton of really good quality detail work in the animations, both in the playable characters and the enemies, which help to make the environments feel alive. This is a big challenge because room shooters can often feel sterile and void of life, but the combination of the fast and frantic action with the gritty style of presentation, it really makes the game feel refreshing to play. It runs perfectly on the Nintendo 64, and I didn't experience any lagging, fogging, or anything which the N64 is traditionally known for. Now look, it's not trying to dethrone any classic N64 game in terms of the best looking game on the console, but when we often see N64 games running poorly, it's just so nice to see something running without any issues in a high FPS, regardless of the fact that it's hardly going to be pushing the system to its limits. Now some people may see it as a negative, but I'm glad they didn't implement expansion pack support, as it's a gimmick that I feel really, you know, let's be honest, it doesn't need to be in this game. There are however some areas where I feel that tricks have definitely been missed by the studio. The biggest problem is that the N64 version should have been four players and not just two players that the game supports. Just take a little bit longer to develop the game and make it four players. The console is designed for four players, and it's a bit of a sin to have a game as perfect for four players as it is on the N64, and then only be able to play it with up to two people. Another glaring issue is that the game doesn't support a twin stick control method, which could have been put into the game using two controllers, very much like other N64 games often did even back in the day. The game is a twin stick shooter, and so to play it with the N64 controller, it just doesn't feel that great. Don't get me wrong here, everything's responsive and there's no lag, but it just doesn't feel like an optimal way to play the game. Moving the control stick and then firing with the C buttons isn't that comfortable, and even with the alternative control options in the menus, it just never seems to be a perfect fit for playing this style of game. I can see people had similar feedback even after the Genesis release, and so I guess it's not something that the studio is looking to address anytime soon, which is a shame because with two sticks this could have made the game much more enjoyable. The controls however are not the only issue that I have with the game. Look, I don't ever consider myself anything more than a slightly above average player. I play games to enjoy them and not because I want to become some professional at this. However, this game's difficulty is completely off the mark. After starting the game on the hard mode, I got absolutely wasted in the first level, and so I quickly retreated, restarted the game in its easy mode. I usually avoid easy mode because I do enjoy some challenge, but in Xeno Crisis, the easy mode is still way too hard. Look, I'm not exaggerating here, but even after hours of playing in easy mode, I was struggling to reach the third level. With my balls well and truly recoiled into my guts, I reluctantly activated the cheese menu so I could at least see what the rest of the game had to offer, and I was very nicely surprised at both the challenge, the variation of levels, and the brilliant boss battles that awaited me. The only problem is, there's so much cool stuff in the game that they've basically prevented the large majority of their customers from ever being able to see it if they don't use the cheat codes. I can't be alone here as I noticed a number of reviews for all versions of the game noting its difficulty as being a big issue. And whether I see playthroughs online I can see that they've often turned on at least one or two of the cheats even to make any progress to show off. The simplest way to fix this I feel without having to redo much of the game could be to adjust the upgrade system that's already built into the game. Both playable characters have their own strengths and weaknesses which does make multiple playthroughs worthwhile as well as having good and bad endings to see. 
With the dog tags that you collect in the levels giving you the ability to buy upgrades in between levels, I would like to see the health upgraded expanded dramatically, which would keep you alive longer and let you take more hits before losing your life and having to get a game over screen. I actually think the balance of the other upgrades is actually quite spot on. There's ammo upgrades, grenade quantity upgrades, base power uplifts, and speed boost for anyone who wants super quick movement. This to add a technical element to the game as you want to prioritize certain upgrades early on, but given how many dog tags you get thrown at you throughout the levels, you'll probably have all of the upgrades purchased by just after halfway through the game. So perhaps some additional tiers would be welcomed here. Rounding off the game's package on a high though is both its sound and audio effects, which are sublime. The soundtrack especially has an instantly recognisable late 80s, maybe early 90s action movie vibe and at times it almost sounds like you've heard it somewhere else before in a nostalgic dopamine hit that comes as a bit of an earworm to you. The guns have a gritty level of bass to them with over 10 different weapons, you know a job's been well done when you can tell which gun you're firing just by listening to how it sounds alone. The enemies too have their own distinct noises and it's fun to tear through hundreds of enemies in a short period, hearing them squelch and squeal as they often explode into a blob of entrails on the floor. Now I like the fact that the game's intro was fully voice acted, but it's a shame that the cutscenes in between levels are text only. The game's not exactly pushing storage capacity of N64 carts, even in physical form, and so by adding in these maybe one or two lines of dialogue between levels really wouldn't have been that taxing. Overall though, Xeno Crisis is an easy to recommend title for me, but your enjoyment from it will likely come down to your expectations going into it. As a single player experience, I expect that you'll do, well, basically what I did, and that's play the game on the hard mode to start with, then change to easy mode, and even then you'll probably realise you're never going to get good enough to complete it, and then you'll do the campaign with various cheats turned on or off. Now you will enjoy that experience, and a single run through, well it takes enough time to make it a fun experience that doesn't really overstay its welcome. It's just a shame that with a few tweaks in the difficulty, maybe some control options, and making it four players would have turned this from a must play game into a must own title. I feel somewhat conflicted because as much as I want more new releases on N64, I think that any studio working on the console needs to realise that the N64 has its own nuances and modern audiences and basically people expect things to be a little bit different on the N64. And so I'm pleased to see that Xeno Crisis has arrived on the console, but I just wish it wasn't as close to a cut and paste release as it has been on other platforms. But that's enough of my views, how about you? Has anyone else picked this title up yet? And if so, let me know if you got the physical or the ROM download release. I'd also love to know if you got the Western or Japanese artwork for anyone who did pick up the physical release. Perhaps you've already played the game on another console such as the Dreamcast or Switch or even the Game Pass version before it is delisted and if so, what did you make of it? I'd also be interested to hear what you think any potential new N64 game developers should take into consideration if they're planning to bring something new to the N64 game library. As always though, let me know your thoughts and feelings, comments and views down below, and until next time. <laughs>